Welcome to this video on using Hess's law to calculate enthalpy changes indirectly and on this video we're going to be looking at using uh, miscellaneous or other enthalpy data in order to accomplish this. Well so far in the preceding two videos we've used two different Hess cycle methods uh, to find uh, enthalpy changes indirectly. We've either used enthalpies of formation uh, where our cycles have been completed by using the elements so we've considered uh, the enthalpy of formation of A would be here and the enthalpy of formation of B would be here and we would use those to work out our unknown enthalpy change and we've considered uh, how we're going to have two roots here between the elements and B uh, you can either go along the red arrows here the so-called indirect route or you could go along the blue arrow here which is direct from the elements to B. Um, and this is the anti-clockwise arrows, and these are the clockwise arrows. Now, in another video, we looked at how we can use enthalpies of combustion, where essentially we burn A in oxygen, and we get the enthalpy of combustion of A. Uh, and we can burn B in oxygen as well, and we can get measure the enthalpy of combustion of B. Um, and if we do that, uh, we can then again find our two roots. This time our starting point is over here at A and we can find a, an indirect route here from A to the combustion products or we can go directly along the blue arrow here and again we can get our two different routes and Hess's law in both cases has told us that the total enthalpy change along the red route is equal to the total enthalpy change along the blue route. Well, now we want to try and uh, extend things uh, to look not just at enthalpies of combustion or formation, but what happens if we have any other enthalpy changes? And it turns out that as long as we can create a closed cycle uh, where we've got two routes from the same uh, between the same uh, two reactants and products, we can actually use any enthalpy changes we like in order to form a Hess cycle and hence calculate enthalpy changes indirectly. So here's a first example of this where we're going to try to find the enthalpy of reaction of this reaction here using these data shown below. So again it's the same basic procedure. We write out our equation. Now I happen to know in this case, um, so here we go, uh, we write on our enthalpy change that we want to find there and then we need to try and first step is to create a cycle um, and the way we're going to do this uh, is a little bit more involved in these examples than it has been in the past so I'm just going to start off by uh, showing you how I would think through this now what I tend to do is start over here on the left hand side and think well which of the other reactions that I've been given contains one of the species on the left hand side and you can see here that the calcium oxide that's here uh, also occurs in here. So that gives us a clue that we're going to want to use this reaction here to complete our cycle. So what we find here is that calcium oxide, if I add water to it, and I'm going to put the water on here, that is going to go and make calcium hydroxide. Aqueous calcium hydroxide. Now carbon dioxide that was on this side uh, hasn't actually um, reacted at all there so I'm going to uh, just simply leave carbon dioxide unchanged. I'm not going to put an arrow for that because it hasn't changed and the data have told me that this enthalpy change takes minus 65 kilojoules per mole. So I've found another point on the cycle. Now I might not have finished yet um, we need to look at the other side of the equation. So calcium carbonate can I connect that up to calcium hydroxide and carbon dioxide? Well, in this case, it turns out that I can, but it's the reverse. You see here, calcium carbonate is the product. Calcium hydroxide and carbon dioxide are the reactants. So the arrow needs to go in this direction. And on these types of problems, you need to be really careful that you get the arrows going the right way. So this is from calcium hydroxide and carbon dioxide to calcium carbonate and water. And so we'll add in water here. And in fact, you can see that the two purple waters essentially would cancel. Um, but it's good to add the water on both sides just to make it clear that this 
forms this and the enthalpy change for that reaction is minus 113 kilojoules per mole. So then we look for our starting and finishing points and our starting point is over here where all the arrows are born and our finishing point is over here where all arrows point to. So we can have our direct route or we can have an indirect route in blue and Hess's law tells us that the energy change for both of those will be identical so we can say that delta H is equal to minus 65 plus minus 113 which comes out at my, minus 178 kilojoules per mole. Let's have a look at another example. So this is a displacement reaction uh, where we've got here um, silver ions reacting with iron to make iron 2 plus and silver and we've got some data here that we can use. So again we we start off just write out the equation for the reaction. Uh, I'm going to drop the state symbols just for, for time. Uh, and Fe2 plus is formed and 2Ag and this is the enthalpy change we're trying to find. So again we play the same game. We try to look here at the left hand side and we see can we see any of the reactions shown where any of the species on the left hand side are turned into the species that are on the right hand side or changed in any way. And we can see here that this reaction here is going to start with Fe, it's going to react with Cu2 plus and it makes Fe2 plus. So what we need is some Cu2 plus and when Cu2 plus uh, reacts with Fe we make Cu and Fe2 plus and the Ag plus doesn't change at all so I'm going to just write Ag plus there and can stick on the enthalpy change whilst we're at it that should be minus 154. Then we play the same game over here where we think well can we do anything to silver to turn it into anything down here um, and it turns out that if we take Cu2 plus and in fact we should have added that on earlier we take Cu2 plus and we react it with 2Ag we can actually make 2Ag plus and Cu so this time the arrow is going from here down to here and we find that that is 137 kilojoules per mole endothermic. So we've completed our cycle. Now all that remains is to find our two roots and we can see the arrows being born here and they're all ending down here. So we can either go a direct route or we can take a detour and go for an indirect route but there are two routes and Hess's law tells us that the energy change overall for those two routes should be the same. So delta H plus 137 is equal to minus 154 so we can solve that to find delta H has a value of minus 291 kilojoules per mole. Now one final example here is just to show you uh, that you can do this exact same procedure for more than a three-step cycle. So all the examples we've seen so far have just had three points to the cycle um, but here we've actually got we're going to have more points so we can tell because we've got more equations here. So we need to try to find here the enthalpy of formation of calcium carbonate using these various enthalpy changes. So um, it would be good for you to pause the video and see if you can construct the enthalpy cycle and determine the enthalpy of formation of calcium carbonate. Well let's see. Enthalpy of formation of calcium carbonate we need to start with solid calcium, uh, we need to start with carbon and we need three halves of O2 gas in order to form it and that's going to form one mole of calcium carbonate solid. 
So we play the same uh, game that we played before, which is we try to think for the left-hand side, uh, can we see any reactions that any of these uh, substances are involved in? Um, and what we find here is that calcium uh, is involved here in a reaction with hydrochloric acid. So if we put our hydrochloric acid in here, 2HCl, uh, we can then react those with the calcium. And I'll just... Uh, see what's going to form. So we're going to make calcium chloride and hydrogen gas. And that's going to react with uh, the carbon. Sorry, that's going to... The, sorry, the carbon and the oxygen are unchanged and so they just stay uh, like that. And we may as well put that enthalpy change on was minus 168 kilojoules per mole. Then we do the same on the other side, and we think calcium carbonate, can we turn it directly into those? Well, not quite, because the only reaction involving calcium carbonate doesn't form hydrogen. So we're going to need a cycle with a few more steps. So again, we're going to put our hydrochloric acid on this side. That's the only reaction involving calcium carbonate, so we're going to have to use that one. Uh, calcium carbonate is going to react with 2HCl, and that's forming CaCl2, sorry, aqueous, and CO2 gas, and H2O liquid. So now we've got two other starting points, and we need to try and think, is there any way that we can connect these together? Um, so we look at the substances we've got, um, and one thing that jumps out is that carbon is involved in this reaction here so we can use carbon and one of the oxygens here to make co2 and that's good because we've got co2 over here so we're going to take uh, calcium chloride isn't going to do anything hydrogen is going to stay the same as well uh, carbon uh, is going to become co2 and that leaves half an o2 left so we've got co2 and then, uh, oh, and the enthalpy change for that one is minus 393 kilojoules per mole. Um, and then we can see that the hydrogen and the half O2 can make H2O, and that's exactly what we've got over there, and that's going to be minus 285 uh, kilojoules per mole. Um, oh, we forgot to put on here, calcium carbonate uh, reacting with acid is minus 54. Uh, and this is the enthalpy change we want to find. So over here, on the next slide, uh, I've got that just drawn out a little bit more neatly. Um, so this is what we're we're dealing with. We now need to find roots around. So it might be worth here just uh, looking carefully at the starting and ending points. Um, so there is a place where only arrows come out. So this is our start. So we've got the arrows being born there. Is there a place where all the arrows finish? Here, only arrows ending, so this must be our end point. So we need our two roots from the start point. You can go in the red root, and that keeps going until we get to the end. Or you could go around the blue root, which is there. Oh, that was our unknown enthalpy change. Uh, the blue root goes that way. So let's uh, see how that all works out. Delta H plus minus 54 um, is going to be equal to the red root, uh, which is minus 168 plus minus 393 plus minus 285. And so when we solve that, we find delta H equal to minus 846 minus minus 54 which comes out at minus 792 kilojoules per mole and that is finding enthalpy changes indirectly using other enthalpy data